Welcome back. So this is one of my favorite lectures on the singular value decomposition and eigenfaces. And this is an example I show in my class uh, at UW a lot. And I haven't uploaded this data set for uh, copyright reasons, but I wanted to show you here, kind of walk you through this example. So here what we're going to do is we're going to find the eigenfaces of a bunch of faces, and we're going to use those to cluster two different people uh, in eigenface space. But in particular, we're going to load and cluster action hero Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Okay, so this is like an eigenheroes example. And I'm just going to walk you through this. Um, the code is pretty simple. It's very similar to the other eigenface example. Uh, and what I'm going to first do is I've taken all of these images of, of these two action heroes online and I've cropped and roughly aligned them while I was watching Terminator. I cropped and aligned these images so that their faces were more or less in the same place and filling the same box. And each image is a 200 by 175 image. I have 20 pictures of Arnold, 20 pictures of Stallone. Uh, and I'm going to put them all into this big A matrix. So the first 20 columns are going to be Arnold. The second 20 columns are going to be Stallone. Okay. And so here uh, we're going to just load them up. So um, you're going to load all of these. I have a folder called Faces, and it's got Arnold 01, Arnold 02, and so on. Stallone 01, Stallone 02, and so on. So I'm going to load them. I'm going to check to see if they're already grayscale or if they're color. I'm going to convert them to grayscale. Uh, I'm going to plot them to the screen, and I'm going to pause for a tenth of a second so you can see the image. Uh, and as I'm going through this, I'm going to keep track. I'm going to add that image to the average so that I can build up this average as I load the images. Now notice here I have this 256 minus U in my image show. That's only because I've, I've done a hard invert of my color on my laptop, so it has a black background. You would just do image show of U to make it look normal. Okay. Okay, so let's load Arnold. Oof. All right, let's try to load all of these and now load Arnold. Okay, so we have the, uh, these pictures of Arnold. These are 20 images I pulled from the internet. Okay. And now what we're going to do is similarly, we're going to uh, load Stallone. 20 images of him from the net. Same exact code. Okay. Good. So now we have a count of 40 because we have 20 images of Arnold, 20 images of Stallone. And at the end of this, I, uh, I took my average face, I added up all of those faces, and I divided by 40. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the average action hero. So this is uh, the average face. I'm just going to plot it. That's what it looks like. Uh, pretty nondescript, kind of a buzz cut, uh, good jawline, right? It's just an average action hero. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those 40 images and we're going to subtract off that average face and create this, this matrix B. Okay, so we're essentially doing principal component analysis, actually. We're finding the principal components of an action hero. So I'm going to subtract that off of every column of my A matrix. That's super fast. And here's where all the magic happens. Now I'm going to plot my S, I'm going to compute my SVD. So I'm going to do an economy SVD of this big B matrix. And I should probably show you what the size of B is. Okay, so the size of B is 35,000 by 40. So for each of my action heroes, I have a 35,000 pixel image that I've reshaped into a tall, skinny column vector. So I took the, the image and I reshaped it in a, into a tall, skinny vector using the reshape command. And then I have 20 of Arnold and 20 of Stallone, so 40 total. We're going to compute the SVD, and the columns of U are going to be my Eigen heroes. Okay? And for some reason, I'm rewriting the U matrix into something called phi. In physics, oftentimes our, our modes are called phi, and so I, I called it phi here, but that doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to create a 9x9 nine nine plot plotting my first uh, nine Eigen heroes here. Okay. And they will be linear combinations of the images I fed in. They have to be. That's how this works. Okay, so these are my nine uh, Eigen action heroes, the Eigen 
faces uh, of the library containing Arnold and Stallone. And so you can actually start to see, right, this is the, the first most dominant mode, the second, the third, and so on and so forth. And you can see some pretty interesting features in this right off the bat. First of all, this one looks kind of like uh, the average face, right? It's kind of just some hair and a face. But then you can start to actually see some real uh, features in the, in the lower energy eigenfaces. So like you see Terminator glasses clear as day here. In fact, you can actually see Terminator glasses in a lot of these images. Apparently that's a very dominant feature. Over here, I don't know if you can see it, but that certainly looks like Stallone's eye. And so you can get this idea that these eigenfaces really are a linear combination of the, the training data. These are my eigen action heroes. And now what's super interesting is I can take each image, each of my tall reshaped vectors, my images, and I can project them into those principal components, into the principal component one, two, and three. My first three most dominant eigenheroes, I can take every picture of, of uh, my, my, from my library and I can project it into that space so I can go from a 35,000 dimensional vector to a three dimensional vector of how much that image contained of principal face one, two, and three. What's the linear combination of those eigenfaces to give image one, image two, and so on? And so it's really easy to do. I literally uh, just take my image vector times my library. It's all transposed here, but this is just my image vector, uh, my image vector projected into the first three eigenfaces, eigenface space for Arnold and for Stallone. So these are their three coordinates in the first three principal components. And then I'm just going to plot them uh, as different colored markers, okay? Um, and put a legend of Arnold versus Stallone. So here, what I've done is I've projected both of these guys into their two, uh, into, into three principal components. And so Arnold are the blue dots and Stallone are the yellow dots. And you can actually see you get pretty good separation. They, they do look different. And so it's not surprising that when you plot these in their, in their feature space, you get these kind of different clouds of uh, Arnold and Stallone. Now I will point out that the separation is not perfect. There is some overlap in these distributions and that kind of makes sense. Um, that they're not perfectly separated, but there is you know, some plane I could find where they separate better and where most of the Arnold points and most of the Stallone points are kind of separate from each other. But what I think is kind of neat here is that you can then take a test image that was not in your training data set uh, and you can project it into eigenface coordinates and you can see does that new test image live closer to the Arnold cluster or to the Stallone cluster and that's the basic idea behind image classification is that you have this kind of cluster of, of Arnold points and a cluster of Stallone points and if I have a new image and I project it in if it's closer to the Arnold cluster it's probably Arnold. So here we're going to do this uh, with kind of a cute example where now our two uh, test images, I hope you can see this, there is um, Oh, it's a little bit dark, but I hope you can see it. So this is Harry Potter Stallone. Okay, so someone photoshopped this. And this is the TV Terminator Summer Glau. So it's not exactly Stallone, and it's not exactly Arnold, but it is, you know, mostly Stallone, and at least here we have a Terminator eye. So it's maybe it is like the Terminator. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these two vectors and we're going to project them into our three, our first three eigen coordinates, our eigenface coordinates, and see where they live. And so when we do this, it's maybe a little bit hard to see, but I think you can, uh, you can in fact see this. The white point right here, that was the TV Terminator. And she drops very solidly in the Arnold camp. So it is apparently just from that one image, she projects very much into the Terminator uh, group. Of, of faces. So you would classify her as, as Arnold or as a Terminator. And the Harry Potter Stallone, this pink dot up here, projects also pretty nicely into the yellow Stallone uh, cluster of images. So even though these images weren't perfect, they do actually project very nicely into the right uh, correct classification category. Okay, so this is just kind of a cute example of how this classification could work and how images 
work in general, uh, or, or image uh, compression using the SVD works in general. Now, I think one thing that's also fun is if I take Arnold, I keep Arnold, Arnold. Uh, actually, let, let's change Arnold to Taylor Swift. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but now we're going to do Taylor Swift versus Stallone. Let me uh, change the name down here. So instead of Arnold, it's Taylor Swift. Okay, so we're going to do the same exact thing, and we're going to see how these images cluster. So these are 20 images of Taylor Swift. Okay. 20 images, same 20 images of Stallone. And we're going to do a hypothesis. We're going to, uh, I always ask my students in class, like, do you think, uh, do you think Arnold and Stallone are going to be more separated or Taylor Swift and Stallone are going to be more separated or her and, and Arnold? Um, okay. Now the average face here, uh, again, is a pretty blobby face, uh, but it definitely has kind of more, you can see more of the Taylor Swift uh, in, in this face, longer hair, certainly. We're going to subtract off the mean from all of the faces again. We're going to compute the SVD and the first nine eigenfaces. Um, I think these are super interesting looking. I mean, very different than before. So, I mean, th these kind of first and third are these very uh, kind of pixie looking uh, eigenfaces, very different than the Arnold Stallone eigenfaces. Uh, you can still see some Stallone in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to project each image again into the first three eigenfaces. Um, and now, uh, instead of Arnold, we're going to have Taylor dots and Stallone dots. So she is blue and he is yellow. And what you see is actually really, I would say, quite good separation. This is actually better separation than Stallone um, and Arnold, I think. I think this is, this is really good separation. That's kind of what you might expect. Uh, maybe her face is more different than still. Her and Stallone's face are more different than Arnold and Stallone. Okay, so you get better separation. But let's do one more test. And instead of doing um, Taylor and Stallone, let's do Taylor and Arnold. Okay, so I'm going to keep this one Taylor. Now I'm going to load Arnold for the second image. And we're going to do this. This is the last test we're going to try. So again, we're going to load 20 Taylor. I'm not changing these little comment titles because that's going to take too much time. So 20 Taylor. We're going to load uh, 20 Arnold. Okay, good. We're going to do all of the same stuff. We're going to compute the average face. Uh, again, kind of a gray looking face. We're going to subtract that off so that we're really doing principal components and compute the SVD. And I'm going to make that much, much bigger. So these eigenfaces, um, Again, you can definitely see some Taylor here and some Terminator over here. And now I'm going to project Taylor and Arnold in. And again, I want you to do this thought experiment. Do you think that they're going to be farther apart than Arnold and Stallone or closer together? I'll let you decide. OK, interesting. So here, this is where my class usually is kind of blown away you actually see that these are pretty overlapping distributions. They're actually way more overlapping than Arnold and Stallone or Taylor and Stallone. So apparently Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger and Taylor Swift are more alike in eigenface space, or at least these first three eigen, eigen coordinates, than Arnold and Stallone or, or Taylor and Stallone. And I always ask why this might be. And I think the answer, you know, I can't tell you the exact answer, but I think the answer is actually pretty um, simple and maybe a little shallow. And it kind of points to some of the issues with these naive image classification techniques just based on correlations in the data. Taylor Swift and Arnold Schwarzenegger are both fair skinned blonde hair, right? Like they, they both have just lighter pixels on average. Okay, so if you're going to dot product their faces, on average, you're going to get more correlation, even if one, one's a guy and one's a girl. OK, so this always kind of confuses my class or, or maybe um, uh, 
you know, people think that, that the, the guys and the girls are going to have the biggest separation because for us as humans, we have, you know, that kind of, um, that prior or that bias that, that those are more different. But according to the eigenfaces, you know, skin tone and hair color sure carries a lot of the information that you would use for that inner product. Okay, so uh, you, you can kind of see some of the shallowness uh, of image classification in this, in this little toy example. But I think it's really fun to, to work this out and just to see what, what happens. Um, something else that's kind of interesting, so Facebook, uh, before you know, moving to, to deep neural network architectures, when they were using more simple algorithms for, for face classification for telling to who's who in a, in a picture, for a long time, they were a few percentage point below human accuracy in telling um, people apart in pictures. And at some point, they finally broke even with humans, or maybe even do a little bit better. And the technology that went into this is super interesting. So everything I've shown you here are two-dimensional images, these kind of 2D representations of faces. But you know that a face is not two-dimensional. It is a representation of a three-dimensional face on a three-dimensional skull. And so what Facebook did was they started to realize that you could take uh, those images and you could infer what the three-dimensional geometry of the actual human head would have been. So, you know, based on shadows, you can get the depth of nose and eyebrows and things like that. And when you take those images and map them to, uh, to a skeleton, you can get that last little bit of performance that, that humans have, because of course that's also what we're doing. We have stereo vision and we know that we live in a three-dimensional world. Okay, so this is one of my favorite examples, kind of the eigen action heroes and, and uh, eigen faces. Uh, you can load your own images and play around with this too. Okay, thank you.